everyone i hope all of you are doing good and today i am here with lines and angles class 7 maths i am roshni from learno hub the free learning platform where you get to study maths and science absolutely for free at learnohub.com now what is geometry we all know that geometry is all about shapes their properties and measurements now when we started learning geometry we learned about some very basic things like a point a line a ray a line segment and now is the turn to learn about angles now what is an angle observe very carefully so i have this box now as i open it what happens when i slightly open it the angle is very small little more the angle is larger little more the angle is larger so what exactly is angle angle is basically the inclination between these two lines right so you can observe these angles when you open a door when you open the door slightly the angle is lesser little more the angle increases slightly more the angle increases further and so on so now it's your task to look around yourself and see where do you see different types of angles so in this video we will learn about angles right from the basics and we will know a lot about their properties Hello friends this video on lines and angles part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com no more fear from exam so as i said line segment line ray angle these are the basics of geometry and definitely not to forget the most basic element that is a point so let's start with a point so point is the most fundamental object of geometry with no length width or height so it has no dimension less it it has no dimension basically they you you just cannot measure its length or breadth or height so it is represented by a dot the you take a pencil and touch the tip of the pencil on a white sheet of paper what do you get on the sheet of paper you see a black dot so that dot represents a point so think of a tip of a pencil or the tip of the compass so these represent dots in fact there are certain things in nature where you can visualize dots for example you are uh, in an aeroplane now when the flight lands just before it lands when you look at a, a city let's say that you are traveling to new delhi okay now the moment the, the a couple of minutes before it, the flight is going to land on new delhi and when you try to look from the window of the flight what do you see you tend to see you, everything on the streets of that city seems like points so the well lit roads or the well lit vehicles everything the huge vehicles also they appear to be points so when you look at look at it from a very far distance all the things whether it is a vehicle or it is a street light or it is a building all of them appears as dots so these are points similarly when you look at a star studded sky at night you you do you get to see the exact shape of the stars no that's because they are very far away from us so we do see them twinkling but when you look at them you they appear to be like dots they appear as points that's because we are looking at them from a very far distance so this is point the next one is line so line is a combination of points that extend indefinitely in both directions so it will tend to continue infinitely in both directions this is important about line so it is nothing but a lot of points put together one after another such that it extends in both direction infinitely so that's a line so when you think of line you can think of the railway lines the railway track so you know it kinds of extends infinitely we do not know till where it extends so so that's an example of line so a straight line is often represented like this with arrow on both the ends which shows that they are extending in both directions now it is not necessary that line always has to be a straight line it can be a curved line as well because in the definition nowhere we say that the points 
should form a straight line. So it is just a combination of points such that it extends in both directions. So even in case of a curved line, it can extend in both directions and it is still a combination of points. Therefore, it is also a line. Now, but many a times people feel that if we talk about line, we are basically talking about the straight line, but that's really not necessary. It can be a straight line. It can also be a curved line. A line is normally represented, let's say that it's tr the straight line is named as AB. So how do we represent the straight line? We write it as AB and over AB we give this symbol which shows that this is a line. Next is line segment. So line segment as the name suggests, it is a segment of the line. It is a part of a line with fixed end points because in case of line it in end, it doesn't have any end point because on both the ends it is extending infinitely. So there is no end point. But when you talk about a line segment, it is a part of that same line, but it has fixed end points. So let's say that this is a straight line as we see, right? It is extending in both directions. Now, if we consider two fixed points, A and B. So this AB, AB is a portion of this straight line but this AB has two fixed endpoints, A and B. So AB is a line segment. So that's line segment. Now it, let, let's think of this um, game which you, I'm sure you would have played uh, with your friends. Now what happens in this game? You have two teams and both the teams, they try to pull the rope in their own direction, right? Now when you look at this long rope it, it's like very long right but when you look at a portion of this rope maybe only from this part to this part what is this 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 portion is nothing but a line segment because it is part of that and big rope right so that means it is a line segment so line segment is basically part of a line which has fixed end points let us look at some examples of line segments from our day-to-day -day life when you look at the ruler or the scale it's a line segment because it has a fixed length, so you know its end points. You think of the rope you tie between two pillars in order to dry your clothes. So here also, you know, it is a fixed length, you know the end points. So these are the two end points, therefore this is also a line segment. You think of your uh, textbook or your notebook where you have these lines. So those lines also have end points, so that's line segment. One simple exercise that you can do anytime is you take a sheet of paper, just fold it and then, you know, try to straighten it again. What do you see? You see that a line is formed here like this, like how you see here. So this shows a folded paper. So when you fold a piece of paper, a line is formed along those folds. So that's also a line segment because it has fixed end points. So these all the, again the ladder that you see on the screen here also each part is each segment is a line segment because they have their fixed end points so these are all examples of line segments from our day-to-day -day life so i guess that now when you look at, at things around you you'll be able to um, find out where do you see line segments Next is a ray. It is a part of a line with fixed starting point and extending endlessly. So let's now talk about ray. So a ray is also a part of a line just like line segment but in this case it has only one fixed starting point and it extends endlessly on the other side. That means only one fixed point. So when you represent a ray it is something like this. This end is fixed but this end extends infinitely. So it is like an intermediate between line and line segment. So line extends in both directions, line segment, both fixed points, ray, one fixed point and one side extending infinitely. So the example of ray would be the sun rays, the light coming from the sun. So since the source is fixed, therefore one end is fixed, but the other end, it reaches infinitely to any place. Similarly, the light coming out of the torch, that also is an example of a ray because you have one end fixed which is the torch and the other end is reaching out infinitely. Now the next geometrical element we will talk about is angle. Now what do you see on the screen? You see a, a box 
which is initially closed and then which is gradually getting opened and then it is totally open. So how does this relate to angle? Of course it does because angle is nothing but measure of orientation between two rays with a common end point. Now here do you see any sort of orientation in these diagrams? So when you look at it initially you see that the lead is closed. So the lead and the box they were like oriented along each other. So that's when it was closed. In the next scenario you see when you gradually start opening it there is some sort of orientation between these two rays. This is one ray, this is another ray and this orientation is nothing but angle. And if you look at it, this ray and this ray, both of these has a common end point. Similarly, as the box is totally opened, the angle increased all the more. So basically what angle is? Angle is a measurement in degrees, which just tells us how much is the orientation between two rays. So let us look at it diagrammatically. Now in the first scenario what happens is both the rays are lying along each other. So the angle is 0 degree. In the second case there is some sort of orientation between the two surfaces. So here the angle is let us assume that the angle is say 60 degrees. In the third case, you see it has opened all the more. So the angle has increased. So let's say that the value now is 120 degrees. So what is happening? As the box is gradually opening, the angle is also increasing. So this angle, this is what angle is. Angle is about orientation between two rays. Right? And this is how we represent angle in the diagram. So it is represented by two rays such that they have a common end point. Only if they have a common end point they can form an angle. Otherwise let's say you have one ray like this and another ray like this. So there is no common end point. So obviously there can be no orientation between the two. So when you talk about the parts of an angle, so an angle consists of the sides or arms of the angle. So these are the arms. This is one arm and this is another arm. So these are the arms or sides of the angle and this common point is called the vertex. So once we have had a quick recap on the basics. Let us now talk about related angles. Now, related angles, what do you see on the screen? You see the picture of this puzzle, which says that the two puzzles are such that they exactly fit into each other. So similarly, we will talk about angles which are in some or the other way related to each other. So the first related angles that we are going to discuss are the complementary angles. Now, what are complementary angles? These are those angles whose sum is 90 degree. So two angles are said to be complementary if their sum is 90 degrees. That means complementary angle is not just one angle. It is about a pair of angles. So when you have two angles such that you add them up to form 90 degree, that is complementary angles. Let us say you have two angles. So let's say that this angle is, let us assume it to be, say 40 degrees and let's say this angle is 50 degrees. So what would be the sum of these two angles? The sum would be 40 degree plus 50 degree. 40 plus 50 is 90. So the sum is 90 degrees. Therefore these two angles are complementary angles. So any two angles if their sum is 90 degree they are complementary. So it is something like this. Two angles Together, so if you have two angles, angle 1 and angle 2, if together they make 90 degree, that means they are complementary angles. So the only criteria to become complementary is that the sum of the two angles should be equal to 90 degree. And what do we say? We call angle 1 is said to be complement of angle 2. So basically we say it like this, angle 1 is complement of angle 2 or angle 2 is complement of angle 1. Now again, it is also not necessary that these two angles need to be completely separate angles. Let us look at this scenario. Let's say this is one angle. Let's say this is angle 1. And let's say that this is angle 2. Let's say that angle 1, the value of angle 1 is 60 degree and the value of angle 2 is 30 degree. 
So in this case, angle 1 and angle 2, they are also complement of each other. So these are also examples of complementary angles. It doesn't matter where the angles are located. If their sum is equal to 90 degrees, then they are complementary angles. Now, in a similar way, we also talk about supplementary angles. Now, can you guess what could be supplementary angles? The concept remains the same. It is just that the sum of these angles is 180 degrees and not 90 degrees. So, 180 degrees means how much? So, how do you represent 180 degree? 180 degrees represented by a straight line. This is 180 degree, right? So, you think of any two angles, let's say that you have one angle like this, which is maybe 120 degree and you have another angle, maybe 60 degrees. So when you find their sum, it is 120 plus 60, which is equal to 180 degree. Now, since the sum is 180 degree, therefore, these two angles are supplement of each other or we can say that these are supplementary angles. So exactly the same concept if you have angle 1 and angle 2, if angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees, that means these two angles are supplementary angles. So let us, uh, in, in this case we will call angle 1 is supplement of angle 2. So let us look at this example. So here you say, let's say you have this angle which is maybe 50 degrees. And here you have this angle which is 130 degrees. So when you sum them up, it is 180 degrees, which is a straight line, right? So these are also, these are supplementary angles. Now, look at this one. So here, what do you think? How many angles do you see? This is one angle and this is another angle. How much is this? This is a right angle, right? So this is 90 degree. This is also 90 degree. So the sum of these two is also supplementary. So the sum of two right angles is always a supplement. They are always supplementary. Now let us look at some of the facts with regards to complementary and supplementary angles. So first we will talk about complementary angles. Now do you think that two acute angles can be complementary? Now before that what are acute angles? Those angles whose value is less than 90 degrees. So angles measuring less than 90 degrees are called acute angles. So let's say you have two acute angles. So can they be supplementary? That means is it possible that you add up two angles lesser than 90 degree and the sum would be 90 degree. Let us look at these examples. Let's say this is one angle which is maybe 50 degrees. This is another angle which is 40 degrees. So when you sum them up, it is 90 degree. These two together makes 90 degree. Therefore, these two are definitely complementary. So yes, two acute angles can be complementary. Let us look at a few more instances. Now this is 90 degree, right? So th this is a right angle. Now let's see if you have two angles like this. One angle is smaller than the other. Their sum is 90 degrees. Similarly, you might have a situation like this where this angle is very small and this angle is quite big but both of these are acute angles so their sum can be 90 degrees. Now there could be a scenario where this angle is very small but this angle is quite big and again the sum is still 90 degrees so therefore all of these are complementary angles so definitely two acute angles can be complementary. Now do you think that two obtuse angles can be complementary? No they cannot because what is an obtuse angle? An obtuse angle is the one whose measure is greater than 90 degree. Now we want the sum to be 90 degree for complementary angles. Now if one angle itself is greater than 90 degree, so there is no chance that it can add up to some other angle to form 90 degree, right? So two obtuse angles can never be complementary. Now do you think that one acute angle and one obtuse angle can be complementary? Definitely not. That's because again, one obtuse angle itself means greater than 90 degree. So you add anything to something greater than 90 degree. So obviously you are going to get something which is greater than 90 degree. So therefore it is not at all possible that if either of the angle is an obtuse angle, the sum can never be 90 degree and therefore an obtuse angle can never be part of complementary angles. So obtuse angle would be something like this which in itself is greater than 90 degree. Therefore, they can never be complementary. 
So let us say, just let us let me take an example. Let's say the value of this angle is 120 degree, which is obtuse angle, and the value of this one is 30 degree, which is acute angle. So when you try to find the sum, the sum would be 120 plus 30, which is 150 degree. So do you think it is 90? No. And it is actually not feasible because one value is itself greater than 90. So how can the sum be equal to 90? So obtuse angle cannot be complementary. Two right angles cannot be complementary again because one right angle, one right angle means how much? One right angle is exactly equal to 90 degree. So in order to, in order that this right angle is complement of some other angle, the other angle has to be zero degree, which is actually nothing. Therefore, two right angles cannot be complementary again. Now, let us look at some similar facts on supplementary angles. So let us quickly look at the facts with regards to supplementary angles. Now, do you think that two acute angles can be supplementary? No, never. Why? That's because both of these angles are less than 90 degrees. Now, let, let's take an example. Let us say that you have two acute angles. Maybe one angle is somewhere around 45 degree and let's say the other angle is 70 degrees. So let's assume these are the angles that you have. So what would be the sum? So the sum would be 70 plus 45 which would be 115. So do you think that is, this is equal to 180 degrees? No. So basically you think of any acute angles. Let's try to think of the maximum possible acute angle, maybe something like 89 degrees. So even if you have two 89 degrees, just add them up. How much do you get? You get 178 degrees, which is still less than 180 degrees. Therefore, supplementary angles cannot be formed by two acute angles. Two obtuse angles cannot be supplementary again. Now that's because when you consider two obtuse angles, now each obtuse angle is greater than 90 degree. Now when you add two obtuse angles, then the sum becomes greater than 180 degree. So with two obtuse angles, sum becomes greater than 180 degree. With two acute angles, the sum is less than 180 degrees. So because of these, Neither two acute angles nor two obtuse angles can be supplementary. So this should be supplementary. However, one acute and one obtuse angles can definitely be supplementary. So this is a typo. So this should be supplementary. So if you take one acute angle and one obtuse angle, then that can be a perfect supplementary angles. Let us have a look at some examples. So let's look at this one. So let's say that this angle, now this is definitely supplementary angles because the sum of these two angles is definitely 180 degree, which is a straight line, right? So here when you look at this angle, this is obtuse, it is greater than 90 degree, right? 90 degree would have been something like this. This would have been 90 degree. So it is greater than 90, so this is obtuse. And this one is acute because it is less than 90. So one obtuse, one acute make a perfect supplementary pair. Similarly, if even if you think it in this way, let's say that you have uh, something like this. Instead of this, if you have two right angles, this is also 90 and this is also 90. So both of these are right angles. So do you think they make uh, a supplementary pair? Yes, definitely. So here also this is talking about supplementary. So two right angles is always supplementary because 90 degree plus 90 degree forms a 180 degree. So basically two right angles will always be supplementary. Yeah, so these were a couple of things with regards to complementary and supplementary angles. Now we will talk about adjacent angles. Now what do we mean by adjacent? Even before we talk about adjacent angles, let's first understand what is adjacent. Now what do you see on the screen? We see uh, maybe a restaurant or a dining hall where you have tables and chairs where people can sit and eat or maybe have coffee or something like that. Now, 
how do you think that adjacent word is related to this restaurant or this dining area so that's because i'll like to give you an example now let us say that you are sitting in this chair and your friend is sitting on this chair and let's say that this is your brother who is sitting on this chair now where is your brother sitting with respect to you so this is you this is your brother and this is your friend right now when you look at it you see that you and your friend you are sitting next to each other you are sitting beside each other right so both you and your friend are on the same side of the table whereas you and your brother are sitting on the other side of the table that is you are sitting opposite to each other right so this is what i'm trying to tell so whenever two persons are sitting next to each other they are said to be adjacent and when two persons are sitting opposite to each other they are said to be sitting opposite to each other so here we are going to talk about the adjacent angles so the word adjacent means next to something whether it is you and your friend sitting next to each other or it is about some angles which are sitting next to each other so two angles just beside each other are termed as adjacent angles now what do we mean by angles beside each other that is what we will understand in the next slide so adjacent angles are those angles having a common vertex and a common arm but no common interior points now these are very important so in order to decide whether two angles are sitting next to each other or not we will have to check that they should share a common vertex and a common arm so this would prove that they are actually sitting next to each other but there is an important criteria that there should be no common interior points so that we know that they are actually sitting next to each other and not within each other right Let, let's look at this example so here let me take examples of these two angles let's consider this angle let's call this angle 1 and let's call this as angle 2 yeah now if you compare angle 1 and angle 2 so do you think that these angles are located next to each other now just by looking at the diagram you should not say that's because here you might easily say that yeah they seem to be located next to each other so they are adjacent but you will have to follow these criteria to understand that how these criteria prove that the angles are adjacent now they share a common vertex so that common vertex is this so this is the common vertex that they share do you think that they share a common arm yes this is the common arm that they share so this one is the common arm so okay so this proves that they are located next to each other so do they have common interior points now when you talk about angle 1 so which area would be which where, where is that location where the interior points would be located so somewhere in this region when you talk about angle 2 where would be the interior points located somewhere in this region so do you think that there can be any point which would be common to both 1 and 2 no because for 1 the region is this and for two the region is this so they will not have any common interior points so therefore all the three conditions are satisfied and this proves that angle 1 and angle 2 are adjacent now you might ask that okay only with common vertex and common arm we can see whether they are adjacent or not so why do we need to have this third criteria that they should not have any common interior points that is because now let us say if i ask you whether angle 1 and this angle that is angle 3 let me call this angle 3 so do you think that this angle 1 is adjacent with this angle 3 now here also if you start looking at point by point so this angle that is formed by these two arms this also has the same common vertex now for this angle and this angle you have a common arm that is that is this arm is common right so first two criteria are getting satisfied but when you look at the third criteria so for angle 
this entire region would be for the interior points and for angle 1 this region would be for interior point so basically the region interior to angle 1 is also interior to angle 3 so they will have common interior points and that is where we will say that angle 1 and angle 3 are not adjacent angles correct and also looking at this you can see that angle 1 is like a part of angle 3 so basically we can't say that they are sitting next to each other they are not sitting next to each other angle 3 is occupying a huge space out of that a small space is given for angle 1 right so angle 1 is basically sitting in the territory of angle 3 so angle 1 and angle 3 are not adjacent whereas angle 1 and angle 2 they are adjacent. So this is where these three conditions help. So only when the three conditions satisfy we can say that two angles are adjacent angles. So let us take one more example. So what do you think these two angles this is 90 degree this is also 90 degrees. So now by now we know that these are supplementary angles because their sum is 180 degrees. But do you think that they are adjacent yeah, kind of they appear to be because they appear to be sitting next to each other. But let's look at it condition wise. They have a common vertex. So this is the common vertex. Do they have a common arm? Yes, this one is the common arm. What about common interior points? Now for this angle, this region would be the interior region. For this angle, this region would be the interior region. So they cannot have any common interior points. Therefore, we can say that these two angles are also adjacent angles. Now let us look at some of the examples here and let's try to see if these are adjacent or not. So this one, do you think angle 1 and angle 2 are adjacent? No. Why? Because they do not satisfy the first criteria. They do not have a common vertex. So no common vertex. Therefore, is this adjacent angle? No. So see for angle 1 the vertex is this. For angle 2 the vertex is this. So they do not have a common vertex. Let's look at the next one. So here what do you think? Are they adjacent angles? Not again. That's because again when you look at angle 1, which is the vertex for angle 1? This is the vertex. Which is the vertex for angle 2? This is the vertex. So again they do not have a common vertex. So therefore here also these are not adjacent angles. The third one, angle 1 and angle 2. What about this? So here we do see a common vertex. So here we have a common vertex. Fine. Do we have a common arm? So for angle 1, what are the two arms? This is one arm, this is another arm. So this is one arm and this is one arm for angle 1. For angle 2, this is one arm and this is one arm. So basically here, we do not have a common arm. So here, no common arm. Therefore, these are also not adjacent angles. But by any chance, if we would have asked if angle 1 and this angle 3, if these are adjacent or not, then definitely they would have been because they would have a common vertex, they would also have a common arm and they also do not have any common interior point. So angle 1 and angle 3 would have been adjacent angles. Anyways, let's look at the fourth one. What do you say? Angle 1 and 2, are they adjacent angles? Not again, because here also if you look at this angle, this is the vertex. You look at this angle, this is the vertex. So they do not have a common vertex. So no common vertex. Therefore, these are also not adjacent angles. So you see, looking at the uh, figures, you will have to determine whether they are adjacent or not. So the important thing to remember is these three conditions, common vertex, common arm, no common interior points. I hope you found the video useful and if you really understood the concept well, do write in the comment section that concept who are crystal clear. And I will see you all very soon with a new topic and a new video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.